on and bless his holy and righteous name because the God that we serve, he's truly worthy this morning. He's worthy this morning. He's worthy. He's truly worthy. How many of you are glad to be in the service this morning? I would like to welcome you to Sanctuary Deliverance, Church of the Living Word, home of total restoration where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. happy you make me whole you take the pain away I'm so in love with you you make me happy you make me whole you take the pain away I'm so in love with you everybody say you make me happy you make me whole you take the pain away I'm so in love with you. Come on, say you make me. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away. I'm so in love. Come on, say it again. You make me. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain. You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. You make me. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. Everything about you. And everything about you is right. Compass. He covers all my wrongs. Your life saved my life. Everything about you. Everything about you is right. He covers all my wrongs. Your life saved my life. With you. mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple uh, who singing Peter and John about to go into the temple, acts and arms. Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Peter said, Civil and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walking praising God. Read verse 10 with me. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. I'm going to use this topic just for a few minutes today. I promise you I'm not going to be long. Am I that easy to let go? Um, am I that easy to let go? Um, hear this, um, I, I found out something this week, Deacon, that courage is not having 
the strength to go on. But it's going on when you don't have the strength. And, and, and at times, if we can, can be honest today, there, there are times when we just don't feel like going on. Am I in the house today? There are times when we are faced with, with challenges and it affects our spirit to the fact that we really just don't want to do it anymore. Uh, maybe I'm the only one that's going to be real today, Sam. There, there, there are times when we can embrace some things, right? And embrace some things, Sister Buffy, and, and it affects us so much that we almost threw in the towel. Um, and, and, but, but there was something about, um, and maybe this is just for me, the word of God that had so much power within it and so much strength within it that even when I wanted to quit, the word of God wouldn't let me. Come on, I want you to help me preach you today since y'all going to look at me like I'm crazy and tell somebody that was the word that kept you. Yes, there, there are times in life where, where we feel that we are being treated unfairly and we're being um, discriminated against and we're being looked over. But I have some news for you that even in the midst of it, you got to still go on. There was a mother um, at this church some years ago and, and she would stand up um, Elder Donna and give words and she would always conclude her story with two words Deacon and her, her last two words would be go on and I had to encourage myself this week because I found myself in the, the mindset of the gutter I found myself in the mindset of wanting to retaliate in a way that would bring no glory to God but the words of Mother Calverta Couch said, go on. I want you to look at somebody, even if you got to yell at them from across the way, and say, go on. What you mean, preacher? Because David said it this way, the Lord is my light, all right, and my salvation. All right, he didn't stop there. He said, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? I know y'all know this verse. Watch this. And, and, and this what made me think about it, Elder Buffy. That, but that when the wicked came up against me. Uh, the, uh, when the wicked came up. I wish I had a church in here. Y'all just a little bit too quiet. I said when the wicked came up uh, um, against me to eat my flesh. Ah, my enemies and my foes in the midst of plotting against me, they stumbled and fell. And watch this. He didn't stop that derail. He said this too, Pastor Gretchen. He said, and though an army may encamp around me, my heart shall not fear. And though war, y'all ain't hearing me, may rise up against me watch what he says watch this Elder Donald in this I want y'all to help me preach this and find you somebody and say even in this I will be confident even in this I still got my joy even in this I got to give God glory even in this I got to bless his name open up your mouth tell God thank you even in this I got to trust God even in this I got to do right by my brothers even in this I got to do right by my sisters even in this I don't feel like doing it but God who is rich in mercy showed up right on time somebody say go on go on go on one thing that I have desired I 
Do I have any praises in here today? I, I know it's just a few of us, but, but I know you didn't come here and leave your praise at home. I want you to say it with me. One thing I desire, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Oh, the days of my life. Can I hurry up and skip this and say this, Elder Buffy? This is going to make you happy right here, Elder Brother Ray. In the time of trouble, God is going to hide me. In the time of trouble, God is going to still bless me. In the time of trouble, God is going to work this out for my good. Somebody say, go on, go on. Go on. The book of, let me say this, the, I, I felt like Deacon quitting. Where are my real humans at in here today? I, I know... We like to be supernatural, spiritual. But I felt like I felt like quitting. But 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 the writer in Hebrew said, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? God gonna protect us. Even through this, somebody said, go on, preacher. Go on, preacher. So, uh, y'all be seated, y'all making me nervous. I lost for a minute. This week, Sister Gail, Minister Music Derail, I lost for a minute. I had my confidence in the wrong thing. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all don't like real preaching? Y'all want me to talk about something else? Pastors, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't talk about that. No, we, we human before we pastors. And, and, and I, 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 for a moment, Fitzgerald, I lost my confidence. And I, I found myself a uh, uh, grown man, hear me now, crying like, like a baby. I couldn't quite understand. God, like Charlie Brown say, why is everybody always picking on me? So I found myself crying. I couldn't quite figure it out. And I started praying. And I lost my confidence for a moment. All right. And then I had to, re I had to realize something. That confidence is not that they would like me. Y'all ain't hearing me. But confidence is I would be okay even if you don't like me. Oh, my God. I need to say it again because y'all missed that. I said confidence is, is, is not, Dana, that they will like you. Because I have learned now in my 48 years of living, everybody ain't going to like me. Oh, my goodness. And, and I don't even have to do nothing. I can just exist and folks won't like me. I wish I was in the house. But then the God said to me, yeah, you're going to always have enemies, but, but you're going to be all right. Say it with me. I'm going to be all right. Even in this, I'm going to be all right. And, 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 and there's, there's a story about, about a man, a lazy man, all right? I want to share this story with you. It was a lazy man, and, and he was very, very hungry, all right? And, and here's what he did, Deacon Tony. He, he saw, a f he had a, there was a farmer that had a field with some fruit in it, Pastor Gretchen. And, and, and so what he did was he, he says, I'm going to go over there because I'm hungry, and I'm going to get me some fruit. So he goes over to the field, and he's climbing up this tree 
uh, Elder Buffy to get this fruit, and the farmer comes out with a stick. All right? And so the lazy man runs. He runs, and he hides himself into the forest. So while he's in the forest, he sees the most amazing thing. All right? Watch this. He saw a fox, Dana, with two legs. And he says to himself, Deacon, he says, well, this is amazing. How is this fox in this environment and he's still alive? It seemed like that something would have killed this fox because it doesn't have both of its legs to protect itself. Mm. Ooh, I'm going somewhere. So suddenly, a lion comes. All right, and this lion Donna has something in its mouth, and all of the other animals, when they saw this lion, they became afraid, and they spread it apart because you know, as I know, that the lion is the king of the jungle. All right, and so when this, so when this lion comes with something in its mouth, everything else is afraid of, including the man. So the man runs up a tree and he watched the most amazing thing. The lion brought something to eat to the fox. So he says, oh my goodness. Oh, God is just wonderful. God, oh, I love you, God. Because you just showed me something that if you can take care of a lion, you would definitely take care of me. All right. So the lazy man comes out the tree and says, you know, I'm going to set myself up to where somebody will bring me something to eat. He goes out to the street and nobody comes. He's waiting. Nobody comes. He's really hungry now because it's been a couple of hours. Nobody comes. So all of a sudden, an older man walks by. And the older man asks him, you know, what's wrong and the lazy man explains to him the situation. So the older man gave him something to eat and gave him something to drink. And so all of a sudden, the lazy man says to the older man, you know, I, I thought that God would have looked out for me. Oh, you don't hear me now. You know, I, I, I saw the fox and the lion took care of the fox but why wouldn't God do the same thing for me? Hear me. And many of us at times, I'm going to mess y'all up. We get upset with God when what we need doesn't come when we want it. Y'all hear me. We, 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 we lose faith when it doesn't come dressed up in the way we thought that it should come. Hear me. So the old man says to the lazy man, listen, I know what your problem is. Your problem is uh, you thought that I was the lion. But what you have failed to realize is that what God was showing you was that you were not the fox. Mm. You were the lion. And most times in life, we get twisted up in our blessings because we don't realize that God is using us in a way to be a blessing to other people. We don't realize that God is using us to be a miracle to somebody else. I want to say this to you as you listen to me today. This is the season that God is going to use your ministry to pull people out the streets. God is going to use the word that's in your mouth to bring the crack addict out of the crack house. God is going to use the word in your mouth to help the battered woman, to help the low self-esteem person because God has a way of using whom he chooses. Can you tell God thank you? And we mess up and lose confidence 
because some of us don't feel like we're worthy some of us don't feel like because I can't preach like this one and I can't sing like this one or I can't shout like that one that God is not using me but the devil is a liar if you are alive today and if you have walking on your own and if you can give God glory God has a work for you even right where you are I want you to look at somebody and say did you hear the preacher God will use you right where you are God will use you even if you're going through this even if you're going through that just don't lose your confidence say neighbor I will not lose my confidence they said this do not throw away your confidence because your confidence has a great reward that's why you got to go on you got to hang on you got to trust God you got to believe God you got to pray wait and trust are y'all hearing me saints I'm not going to throw my confidence away because it doesn't look like I want it to look. I'm not going to throw my confidence away because you turned your back on me. I trust God. This is the confidence. I say it every week. That we have in him. Y'all can finish that one. I say it every week, Sam. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask, uh, did y'all hear me? I said, if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And I don't know about you, but I just want God to hear me. Because I choose to believe that God won't hear me and let me suffer. God won't hear me and let me go down. I'm giving God praise because in a little while, payday is coming. After a while, preach to your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, if we can hang on in there, payday is coming after a while. It's coming after a while. All right, let me get to this. So here we are in Acts chapter 3, all right? And, and something interesting happens. Peter and John are going into the temple because it was prayer time. A lot of people don't believe in prayer time no more. But say it with me, I believe in prayer. Come on, that don't sound too convincing. Say it with me again, I believe in prayer. Prayer still move mountains. Y'all ain't hearing me. I believe in prayer. All right. And Peter and John goes up together into the temple because it was the hour of prayer. Now watch this. It's amazing how Peter and John is mentioned together in the Bible seven times. Because we understand John to be the disciple of love. The one who Jesus loved. He loved all of them. But John is the one whom he beloved. And because John talks about love in his epistles, he's demonstrating what he preached. Hear me, because we're a preacher. Why do you say that? Because we understand Peter to be very impulsive and a cusser and will cut your ear off. Y'all ain't hearing me. And we're not understanding this to be what we heard. We understand this to be what he done. The Bible said Peter cut off a man's ear. The Bible said that he started to swear and use profane language. The Bible said these things. But what you find is Peter and John going together. Never allow a person's past 
to prohibit you from connecting to their present. See, some folks don't like you because of what they heard. Y'all ain't hearing me. Some folks can't stand you, Dana, because of something you done 10 years ago. Some folks still holding a grudge against you, Pastor Maggie, because of something you done 25 years ago. I believe that the day has come that we have to look past the faults of our brothers and sisters and walk with them and pray with them and that they can become stronger in their faith. You never know when you should allow yourself to pour grace and mercy into the life of a person because one day, Buffy, you're going to need the same grace and mercy. That's why I got to share this with you. I, I, I can't judge nobody. Y'all ain't hearing me. It's not in me to judge a man because God can use anyone he chooses. Now you can be superficial all you want to and you can be bougie all you want to but you gotta be careful who you judge because the same man that you judge could be the same one with a miracle in his mouth that will heal your body. Y'all ain't hearing me. And if John would have let Peter go, the, ch the ministry would have still been the same, but Peter still needed somebody. And hear me, when we become believers, don't ever forget what it was like. Remind yourself, God, I used to do this. I used to do that. But I thank you. I give you glory. I give you praise. Is there anybody in here today that can thank God for what he brought you from? I want to give you about 15 seconds. I want you to open up your mouth and begin to bless God for the stuff that could have killed you, but God brought you out. I'm going to give you 10 more seconds to give God glory for everything that could have handicapped your life. But God, but God brought you out. Come on and give him praise today. Can you give God glory for how you used to be? You used to be a drug addict, but God brought you out. You used to have a lion spirit, but God brought you out. You used to play in church, but God, he brought you out. And since he didn't kill you, when you was in that season, you owe it to God to say, Lord, Lord. It's prayer time, and they are on their way into the church. And a certain man, Somebody say that with me. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb. That means, Elder Donna, he was born like this. Ah, he was born like this. But every day, he was carried to the church. And they laid him down at the gate of the temple so that he could beg of alms. Hear me, just imagine for just a moment. Someone has to dress you, hear me, wash you, and bring you. Watch this. It was interesting to me why they couldn't get them in the church. Y'all ain't hearing me. But they put them on the outside of the church. So I, I, I can appreciate those friends that will bring him to the church. But I need some friends that's going to bring me in. Y'all ain't hearing me. I need some friends that's going to bring me in the church. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So here they are. They drop him on the outside of the gate. All right? So he sees Peter and John. 
about to go into the church and he asks them of arms, all right? He asks them of arms. Peter says, look on us. Now, I had to really struggle with this, Dana, because I kept wondering, why does the text say, look on us, all right? So I said, well, I said, God, why didn't the writer say, look at us? Why did he say, look on us? On indicates, it's a preposition, both of them are prepositions, but on indicates a more specific location. All right? And at indicates a more specific time. Y'all missing this. Let, let, me, let, me, let me say it slower, Dana. Okay, on, he said, look on us. So on indicates a more specific location. At indicates a more specific time. So Peter says, look on us. And the Lord said to me, he said, hey, the reason why Peter said to look on us, because this was going to be the last time you would be in this state. Y'all ain't hearing me. I don't know who I'm talking to. But the Lord told me to tell you, stop looking at stuff and start looking on stuff so that God can change your circumstance. And I don't know who I'm preaching to to YouTube today or even on Facebook, but I'm your FedEx delivery boy. And I got a word for you. This is the last time you're going to go through this. This is the last time you're going to suffer like this. This is the last time you're going to cry your last tear. This is the last time that you're going to be gone like this. If you believe it, open up your mouth and give God glory. Open up your mouth and give God praise. Say it with me. This is the last time. They're going to say, I'm at the Buffy. The last time I saw you, you had looked like you had been going through. And you're going to say, but that was the last time. Y'all ain't hearing me. That was the last time I'm going to struggle with that. And I got news for you. If you can bless the Lord with me, this is the last time that we're going to go through a storm like this. This is the last time that the devil going to have his way in our life. This is the last time. If you believe it, I dare you to give God a praise for it and open up your mouth and say, Lord, this is the last time. Oh my God. Who can say it with me? This is the last year of my struggle. Next year? Oh Lord. Y'all ain't hearing me. This is the last year of complications on this job. Oh Lord, have mercy. Listen, when you go home today, tell everything in your house, from your dog to your fish, this is the last time we're going to go through something like this. Y'all ain't hearing me. Listen, when you see your unsaved children, you got 365 days. Do all that you're going to do. Because this is the last year. See, the problem is, we look at our children and our circumstances now, and we're scared to speak to it. But I heard the Lord say, speak to your mountain. Speak to your situation. This is the last time that we will go through this. Somebody 
somebody and tell them, if you only knew what all I have been through these last few days, you will be dancing with me. But I decree, this is the last time I'm going to go through this. This is the last time. The last time. I'm not crying no more. Seke de bosha. Fi kalabasa ne de boki te de bosha. Kashe de bosha. Fi yabasa ne ke de bo. I'm not crying no more tears. This is it. This is the last time. Am I that easy to let go of? Don't you hear me? Am I that easy that you can just drop me? You said you love me. You gave me years. You, you mean to tell me at the end of the day you You've been faking it for, for seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years. You, you, you can just drop me like that? I'll tell you what the Lord said to me. Yeah, I'll buy Shandy. See? As I have, oh God, I, I don't have no silver and gold. But he says, as such as I have, meaning, watch this, I have something better than silver and gold. Y'all ain't hearing me. I, I got something better than money. Oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. I want you to hear this. The man gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something. Silver and gold, I don't have. But he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately you know I, 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 I was thinking about Bishop's message last week about not losing your footing and sometimes we lose our footing because of where people put us but Peter and John comes up and says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And they took their hand and lifted him up. Watch this. And his feet and ankle bones received strength. Oh, my God. What you mean, preacher? There was something in Peter and John that would not let him go. Oh. They could have very easily have said, that's not our problem. Y'all ain't hearing me. He was here before we got here. And this is what most saints do. When problems come up, y'all ain't hearing me. When problems arise, Donna, we don't want to deal with it if it was there before we were. But you got to remember, when God allows you to come upon a problem, maybe you are there because you are the solution. Oh, Lord. And, 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 and hear me. This is where many of us have failed. You were so into yourself that you totally forgot the mission that you are on as a believer. 
Ooh, y'all ain't liking me. Yeah. You, you want to preach so bad that you totally forget that preaching has nothing to do with a pulpit and a mic. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't hearing me. You, you, you are so angry with yourself that you run away people that actually love you. Because you don't want nobody to see the real you. Oh, my God. My question to you today, St. Jerry, am I that easy to let go? Uh, what you mean? What you mean, Pastor? I, I'm not understanding what you mean. Because I would never, ever be, and there would never, ever be a perfect pastor. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, am I in the house? Uh, th- there will always be a man and a woman of God that may not fit your description, but are they that easy to let go? And I got to say something to you. If you can easily let a person go that you claim you love, that God sins, it's nothing wrong with them. Something is wrong with you. Preacher, I don't believe it.